know the super hot project called Trellis on Hugging Face? You upload one or a few images of an object and boom, it generates a stunning 3D model almost instantly. Today, we're diving into the groundbreaking paper behind this magic. It's all about structured latents, they call it SLAT. SLAT works by combining sparse 3D structures with dense visual features extracted from multiple views of the object. These features are fused into a latent grid that can decode into formats like meshes, radiance fields, or 3D Gaussians, all in stunning detail. Ready to explore? Let's get started. Let's begin by exploring a system that unites powerful methods for generating structured 3D content. Ever wondered how you can take a single image or a short text description and turn it into a rich 3D model? That's exactly what this work accomplishes. It transforms simple inputs, like vintage camera with leather case, into detailed, realistic 3D assets that capture geometry, textures, and more. Look at figure one here, and notice how these generated 3D models aren't just static. They come with structural information that makes them ready for editing or integration into different applications, from gaming to simulations. This section sets the stage by highlighting how structured 3D latents strike a balance between scalability and adaptability. It introduces the idea that we can move beyond traditional limits in 3D content creation and interact with it in a much more dynamic way. Check out the examples here to see how this method creates high-quality 3D objects from either text prompts or images. Look especially at the textures, wood, glass, metal, pixelated effects. Everything is handled seamlessly. Even local edits become easier. Want to tweak a small part of the object? It can be done without retraining the whole system. The abstract outlines the system's backbone, a representation called structured latent or SLAT. This representation can produce multiple output formats, like meshes or radiance fields, while effectively capturing geometric and visual details. Sparse 3D grids combine with dense visual features, and a transformer model, trained on 500,000 objects, handles it all. This approach generalizes across many inputs and supports flexible local editing. It also removes the need for complex retraining whenever you want small modifications or different output formats. So why is 3D generation more challenging than 2Ds? In 2D, grids are straightforward, but 3D data comes in formats like meshes, point clouds, radiance fields, and so on. Each format excels at certain tasks, but can fall short in others. For example, mesh-based methods do well with geometry, but often struggle with visual quality. Meanwhile, radiance fields look great when rendering views, but can't easily extract geometry. The solution here is SLAT, a unified representation that merges sparse structures with dense visual details. This unified approach captures both the shape and the appearance of 3D objects. The method, called trellis, first constructs a coarse, sparse structure then uses transformers to add in the details. By training on a large dataset of 3D assets, Trellis provides high-quality outputs and supports multiple 3D formats. Think of it like a universal toolkit for generating 3D objects in different styles, without having to switch approaches every time. This part expands on creating a versatile 3D latent space that maintains strong performance across diverse tasks. The key idea is to use sparse 3D structures that efficiently handle different representations. This means you can model high-resolution objects and perform local edits without needing full details for every voxel. Pre-trained vision models are used to capture fine geometry and appearance, removing the need for specialized 3D encoders. That cuts down on complexity and training overhead. The method delivers four main features. High quality, versatility, flexible editing, and training that doesn't require fitting an entire 3D model beforehand. Everything is open sourced models, code, data, so you can dive in, tweak, and use it for various applications. Now let's look at how compact latent spaces help achieve efficient 3D generation. Before, methods often had to compromise. If you focused on geometry, you needed extra steps for texturing. If you focused on appearance, shape details might suffer. Compact latent spaces solve this by encoding both geometry and appearance in a single framework. Here, imagine a 3D grid where only a subset of voxels 
the active ones outlining the object are stored. Each active voxel holds localized information about shape and look. This keeps storage low and makes computation more efficient. The model can still represent large or detailed shapes thanks to this structured approach. So even with fewer points, you maintain high resolution where it matters. Two big ideas stand out here. First, visual feature aggregation. The system takes multi-view images of a 3D asset and maps them into a sparse 3D grid. Each grid cell holds detailed geometry and appearance features, aggregated from different viewpoints. By working with sparse grids, the method keeps things efficient without sacrificing fidelity. Second, the sparse VAE. It encodes and decodes those features into structured latents. An encoder turns the 3D features into compact representations and a decoder reconstructs them, aligning closely with the original. This approach sets the stage for scalable 3D generation, since you can train on large datasets and then generate diverse, high-quality results. So how does encoding and generation actually happen? First, multiple views of a 3D object are passed through a pre-trained model to get dense visual features. These features get combined into a sparse grid capturing geometry and appearance. A variational autoencoder VAE, then encodes this grid into structured latents, which preserves fine details in a compact form. Next, specialized transformers do the heavy lifting. One transformer determines the coarse 3D structure, while another refines the local latents. Together, they create a robust pipeline that can generate different final outputs, like meshes or radiance fields, with consistent quality. If you look at the figures here, you'll see how each step contributes to shaping the final 3D model. Here's a closer look at the decoding phase. The structured latents can be turned into formats like Gaussians, radiance fields, or meshes. Let's say you choose Gaussians. Each latent stores properties like position, color, scale, opacity, and rotation, all constrained to match the voxel locations. Loss functions ensure the decoded components match the target appearance and geometry. For radiance fields, you generate volumetric data that renders into 3D scenes. The method divides the representation into chunks to handle it efficiently, using reconstruction losses to keep results accurate. All these decoders share the same overarching design, but are tweaked for each format's unique demands. Now, decoding into meshes works in a similar structured way. The system predicts parameters for voxelized shapes, estimates distances, and extracts a clean surface. Upsampling blocks increase resolution, matching ground truth depth maps. Gaussians are used to train encoders, thanks to their high fidelity, while the other formats rely on frozen encoders that specialize the decoders. After decoding, the method's generation process kicks in. First, it makes a sparse structure that outlines the object's overall shape, and local latents refine that shape with high detail features. Everything is processed with transformers, which handle large sequences efficiently by packing noisy data into smaller segments. Text or image prompts guide the outputs through cross-attention, making the pipeline responsive to different inputs. Structured latents also simplify 3D editing. You can compress a dense voxel grid into sparse features, preserving overall shape while making the data easier to manipulate. A transformer then learns to predict these features accurately so that editing remains straightforward. Two editing modes are highlighted. First, detail variation, where you can change textures or small details guided by text instructions. Second, region-specific editing, which allows you to modify just a portion of the object like removing the arms of a character, without affecting everything else. A two-stage pipeline handles these edits to maintain coherence between the modified region and the rest of the model. Here you can see visual examples of the 3D assets generated by the model. Notice the rustic log cabin, the futuristic toy blaster, and the detailed bulldozer designs. Check out how the textures vary in each object. There's a medieval castle with fine tower details, plus kitchenware sets that clearly show different materials. Each example demonstrates how well the system translates either text prompts or reference images into 3D shapes with strong geometric and aesthetic fidelity. Next, let's look at how the model was trained and evaluated. The team assembled a massive data set of around 500,000 3D assets, complete with captions from GPT-4 
and images generated by Dal Li. Various text prompts help the model learn a wide range of object types. I trained different model sizes, basic, large, and extra large, using a lot of GPU power for the biggest one. Quantitative metrics show strong reconstruction and geometry alignment, especially when using Gaussian-based decoders for appearance and mesh-based decoders for shape. Compared to earlier methods, the model reaches higher fidelity in both visual and geometric aspects. Here, the visuals compare how different 3D generation techniques handle text and image prompts. Look at figure two, and see the differences in clarity and detail among methods like SHAP-E, LN, 3DIFF, and 3D Topia-XL. You'll notice how this proposed approach creates sharper, more coherent shapes. Check out the table for metrics on geometry accuracy and appearance. The method stands out for its precise 3D forms and high quality textures. Prompts like a wooden horse cart or a futuristic spaceship produce distinctive and detailed results, showcasing a level of realism the other methods struggle to achieve. You'll also see examples where the system excels at fine detail. For instance, it handles intricate designs like a radio grill or the edges of a bulldozer with very few mistakes. Compared to other methods, alignment with text prompts is consistently strong. Some competing techniques might lose detail or produce odd surface artifacts. Here, the geometry is coherent and the surface details look sharp. This reinforces the method's adaptability, whether the user wants precise, high-fidelity text-to-3D generation or simpler shapes that require less detail. Curious about how different design choices affect performance? Check out these ablation studies. They investigate factors like resolution and channel size revealing that higher settings boost reconstruction quality, but also increase computation. Another comparison looks at two stages in the method, rectified flow versus diffusion-based generation. Rectified flow shows benefits in detail, fidelity, and efficiency. Bigger models also yield better outputs with minimal downsides. You can see various 3D asset variations, like edits that remove arms or replace legs with tracks. These experiments highlight the system's flexibility and stability, even under significant modifications. Next, you'll find more about user studies and applications. Over 100 participants compared different 3D generation methods, favoring this approach thanks to noticeable gains in quality. Further ablations measure how structured latents influence performance. By adjusting latent resolutions, you see clear improvements in output fidelity. Finally, two real-world applications are demonstrated, generating diverse 3D variations and performing region-specific edits. For example, you can add or remove features in a localized area while keeping the rest of the object intact. This expands the range of practical uses and adds a new level of control over 3D creation. In summary, this research presents a fresh way to produce high-quality, versatile 3D assets. The key innovation is the structured latent representation, which encodes both geometry and appearance into localized features on a sparse grid. This enables flexible outputs in formats like meshes, radiance fields, or Gaussian representations. The two-stage pipeline uses advanced flow transformers that work directly with structured latents, making the generation both powerful and easy to adapt. Extensive experiments show the method excels in quality, versatility, and editing options, making it a promising tool for areas like entertainment, digital design, and beyond. And that brings us to the end of our deep dive. Thanks for following along. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to revisit any figures and examples and explore the code and data released by the authors. It's always exciting to see how these techniques keep moving 3D generation forward in new and creative ways.